Hello folks and welcome. I have a request by two subscribers about Debian 12 Bookworm uh, XFCE desktop. So I'm going to address both of these in this video. Uh, one uh, subscriber wanted to know about backports, in other words where the software is coming from. And the other person was stating how dull the uh, Debian 12 XFCE desktop is. Well, I basically responded to the last person by stating you can spice things up. So I'm going to show you an example of some of that. And uh, I, then I'll address the uh, backport uh, question toward the latter part of this video. I am filming in 1920 by 1080, so adjust your YouTube player accordingly if necessary. If you're not a subscriber, the icon is in the corner of a person with yellow brackets. I have well over 370 videos on all kinds of things. And uh, I will point out the fact that if you do want to spice up your desktop, that you check those videos out independently because I'm not going to mention details today. But I will show you just bare minimum stuff. So welcome folks, again, filming in 1080. So this is the file manager. This may not be your cup of tea when it comes to icons, but this here, these are quite colorful. I'll make them small and back to jumbo and in between. I'll let you look at some of the menus. You can see they're quite colorful. Even the Firefox icon is very brightly lit. I'll go to settings for a second. All right, I'm also using a non-standard mouse pointer. They're actually installed in the same location as that icon set that I'm currently using. So the appearance section, I did not add these manual themes by using this button. So these come installed on your system. These three, I added this one. I also added the candy icons and the same developer has another one called Sweet Rainbow. Let me let you see what they look like. I'm switching to it now. They're a kind of a neon looking. You can see all the icons in here. So if I switch uh, also views, you can see those. Anyways, very brightly colored. So that's terminal, that's file manager, web browser, application finder. Now I'm going to switch, or should I say, would you like to know where they're located first? I did not use this button here. So I install these things manually. All right, so, but I'm going to switch to the standard set first. Some people find these very bright. So we're going to talk about locations just very briefly. And again, I have dedicated videos on this. I'm going to switch to the standard set and also the window manager is also set for this. I have videos on all of this. Normally too, uh, the mouse cursor is located here. This is your standard one. But I'm going to leave this one if you don't mind. It's a nice pointer. It's nice and highlighted yellow so you can see where I'm at at all times. Normally you would also want to log in and out of your system when you do this kind of drastic action. Then I'm going to also make mention of the fact that some of these things have incompatibilities. Nothing is perfect. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that when we talk about backports also. All right, so now we're talking standard icons. Control H displays hidden stuff. Very common command on all modern Linux file managers is Control H, pretty much. All right, in here, I created a folder manually called period or dot icons. This is the radioactive mouse pointer or cursor. This is the candy icons that you saw earlier and the sweet rainbow. They're all in nice containers. I have dedicated videos for this. On some distributions, it auto generates this folder. It will be empty, but it auto generates it nonetheless. Another folder that is generated by some distributions when they have their built-in themes, they will generate this folder, dot .themes, also hidden, period themes, dot .themes. So M Sweet Ember Blue is installed there. That's what I was using for that colorful button set. So that's a, a theme, 
actually. So when I went in here earlier, I pointed this out to you. Sweet Ambar Blue is right here. That's in dot themes. I did not use the add button. Candy icons, Sweet Rainbow, and Mouse Pointer are all contained in the same folder, which is period icons. Okay, now I'm gonna continue. Turn that off. All right, last uh, week I was doing a video for Debian 12 on backups. So you may want to take a peek at that if you're interested in stuff like that. Now we're going to talk a little bit about back ports. I'm going to stop here a second and just basically state this. Debian 12 is known for a very stable system. And there's a reason for that. So Debian has uh, touted over the years, and you probably have read this, that Debian is a very stable system. And there's a reason for that. So I'm going to open up Synaptic Package Manager just for a second. And then I'll also talk about the location uh, in your system where these are located. SYN, or SY is close enough. We're going to open up Synaptic. I'm going to put in the password to get in here. And uh, more importantly, 63,486 packages. I'm sure you can find a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, and don't forget the search feature has multiple ways of looking at things. All right, so where's the stuff coming from? Repositories, repos. So the uh, second request for the video was about enabling backports. Now, one of the reasons that Debian 12 did not enable those automatically could be because of stability. Debian is known for being a stable system, but more importantly, when you start introducing other backports, and repositories it could make your system unstable is what i'm getting at but these are your standard ones that are installed and there might be a reason why they didn't have the backports listed there file manager time i have a shortcut for you i'm gonna present it for you so in your file system under etcapt if you can read that up there is where you have your sources dot list dot d and you may have a file called sources list i'm going to open that with mouse pad and make that bigger for you so these are where the stuff is coming from there's the security ones and then there are the ones with the pound symbols that's what we call that in the united states are notations okay sources list Closing. I'm not going to show you how to do this, but I will point you to links that you can read all about it, as one would say, providing you have the knowledge of how to get into terminal, how to do terminal commands like SU. You may know you've heard of sudo and SU, maybe. Okay. I'm providing also in your file manager that you know how to get into a file that is root protected because that file I didn't make mention of that let me back this up a second right click properties this file is owned by root so to make any changes in here you need root permissions so moving along here's the instructions from Debian backports this is coming from backports.debian.org instructions Pause the screen, handwrite this address down if that's what you want to do. It discusses that file I just showed you, the etc. apt sources list.d, which you could have a sources list file, and I showed you that one. Okay, installation instructions. And more importantly, think about it before you enable things. If you want a different way of looking at it, I have another link for you. This one is from linuxpatch.com, setting up backports for Debian 12. Here's an example of using the sudo command, but uh, if you know anything about Debian, sometimes you've got to use su to get into sudo or root mode. Anyways, there's instructions here. So again, just some food for thought. If you absolutely need backports, 
there you have the link so you can do that yourself. Just remember this. When you start enabling different repos for distributions, sometimes it takes some of that stability away. And as far as the theming is concerned, the beginning of this video, again, use those themes discerningly. If you have problems with themes, don't use them. My philosophy has always been this way. Try it out yourself. Don't take my word for it. Thank you for watching.